Hey, we are live, Shane, already. All right. So, perfect. Um, welcome, everybody, to today's show. Um, we still have no viewers, but that's not a problem, I think. They must be coming in later on. So, what we are doing today is a little bit different from the usual content that we provide. Um, Shane, today, uh, the co-founder of Rock Trader, will tell us a lot about the economic crisis and what he can present to us, what going to help us, helps the world in order to maybe go over these uh, very hard coming 18 months or maybe more or maybe less. So um, Shane, please tell us a little bit more about all of this. We will have, you know, around, I think, one hour and a half for all of this. So please. Let us know. Yeah, so this is going to be a little bit different. It's, uh, you know, and I'll get into it in the slides. Um, uh, you know, this isn't a typical webinar. I don't like, uh, I'm not a webinar guy. I, I'm a trader. Um, so I'm not a professional presenter. So don't expect anything slick or fancy. But, you know, what I have to do, because of the topic I'm going to talk about is really unknown to a lot of people. I can't just say, do this. You know, I, I've got to start kind of from the beginning. And I have to explain what this is the theory behind it, and then the application. So you get those little aha moments and, and the wheels start turning in order to understand the entire concept. Uh, you know, anything worth doing sometimes takes a little bit of effort. So it's a little bit longer. Again, it's, it's not a webinar. It's more of a workshop, but I'm, I'm giving you knowledge. I mean, I've been doing this since the 1990s. My partner's been doing this in the 1990s. And, you know, when you talk about, you know, economic chaos and all that stuff, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say the world's in trouble because I don't want to be pessimistic because there's all kinds of wonderful things. But holy there's cow, we've got, yeah, we've got some unprecedented problems. I mean, I, yeah. I did e com for a while. You've got logistics issues and you've got inflation. And uh, there's just so many things. And I know it's very negative for a lot of people. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of talk about people being thrown out of work. And I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know that as long as there's functioning markets, I mean, you know, like stock markets, bond markets, cryptocurrency, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's always opportunities because human psychology always applies to them. The same strategies I've been doing since the 90s still work today. This isn't some gimmick or some flash in the pan. You know, this is going to work for the rest of your life. And if you learn how to do this skill and what I'm teaching here is designed for part time. I'm, I'm assuming everyone has a busy lives and jobs. And this is this is a side hustle. Could it be more than that? Yeah, for people who want to go beyond that eventually. But I always recommend just dabbling in it. Doesn't take long, you know, half hour, hour or two each week, whatever, no problem. Get used to it. And in fact, this is the same advice I've given to people all over the years, you know, who, who came to me for mentoring. They said, well, hey, I'm really interested in what you're doing. I want, I want to be a trader and I want to be this. You know what? Dabble in it full time or, or, or part time for a couple of years get your feet wet, learn, learn the ropes, then make that transition. People who jump in too quickly, they're just not prepared for it. And um, I, I always think that having a full-time job, having a source of income and using trading as a side tool and letting it develop is the best way to go. But it's a wonderful way to make a side income or more if you want to. Again, I've been doing it since the 90s. So uh, it, it's not going away. It's not a fad. It's not a gimmick. It's here. So you mean really like trading you're doing it since the 90s like i mean in yeah. the 90s we obviously we had some some kind of uh, computer screens you know but i guess this was still doing done the old school way um how, yeah. how would it work yeah. uh, for example would you would you call the bank would you call your broker uh, would you go personally yes. there how would it work both and all uh, i mean yeah you're right at that time there was internet the phone was huge. People would call in. And that was my first job was working for a big brokerage firm. And I was handling options, retail uh, order flow. And I was on the phone all day long and just, you know, banging things. You know, it's like from the movies, right? Then I went on to do other uh, other work for other big firms and, and got trained in their proprietary trading systems. But, yeah, it was a little bit old school back then. Uh, people would still come in and fill out trade tickets. Uh, you exactly. know, slips of paper like I remember that. At the yeah. front office. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've come a long way and, and I've seen a lot, you know, I've seen the dot-com uh, bubble and that Thousands. burst and then, yeah, and then great years and then, you know, the 2008 and then the largest bull run in history since. 
uh, you know, he's got these guys out on YouTube who are, you know, everybody makes money in a bull market, you know, as long as you're, as you're buying. <laughs> you know, they've been trading for six months or oh, I've been trading for two years and I've got, you know, you don't know anything. Just wait till this market turns around. And sure enough, most of those people have disappeared. And not to, not to discourage them, but so many traders just have not seen market cycles. You know, a bear market can, can last a long time. Nobody's even seen interest rates rise, you know, their entire careers. It's crazy. You know, I remember my dad in the early 80s was complaining because his mortgage was 19 percent. A mortgage, you know, it's crazy. Right. So and people can't even understand that right now. But, yeah, these things can happen and you get these market cycles. And the more experience you have uh, trading these and I've traded a lot of different instruments, too, not just options. Uh, you, you know, you, you just you learn to expect the unexpected, I suppose. OK, so for, for me, I am I am as well into all all kind of you know um investing uh mm -hmm. but not into trading so i'm not mm. so there's there there is different things for the audience as well there is different yeah. um yeah different ways to 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 in to invest or to to make your money work and trading is one part of it and there's little fractions into trading and there is mm -hmm. as well investing so my i am the investor type i'm I am looking as well into trading because it's very interesting, mm -hmm. especially the option trading is super interesting because it's something which might, um, uh, well, I, like you already said, it can be very uh, made from as a side hustle. You don't have to watch yeah. your screen 24 hours. And that's what I like as well yeah. in investing. I don't have to stay at my screen and wait. No, 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 it's going down. Oh, no, it's going up. What is going to happen next? And you know, it's no, no, no. I, I don't want all of this. It's, it's giving, it will mm -hmm. give me a, a crisis in my in my day and it's not healthy for me so i'm not that mm -hmm. type of person there's people who can take it and there's people who are really really good in that and i know a lot of people who are like day traders in forex and mm -hmm. everything but i think their uh, their heart rate must be very very unhealthy but still but still they, yeah. they can manage you know yeah well that's the secret to trading is being mechanical and having a system so every decision you make is not based on emotion it's just based on a set of rules and it's it becomes easy but it takes time to do that and learn that because you're right it's you see something go up and down you're like oh what do i do you know so what what i teach is is the most relaxed style of trading i know of and you can just do it from your smartphone you know every day or two you look at your smartphone maybe you do something maybe you don't that's cool yeah, that, that's that's the way i like it. i like to sleep at night you know? How does it? How does it work? Is there, um, like, is is it is it possible to? I have no idea. When my if my question is not logic, just tell me. Um, is there any possibility in trading uh, in uh, uh, crypto options or Ethereum yes. options? Yes, I trade primarily crypto options. Actually, okay. I mean uh, that that's what my focus is on right now. As I get it deeper into Q two, I'll shift back for 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 the audience that follows me and follows my trades. I'll shift back into more of the traditional, uh, you know, stocks and indices and commodity futures and things like that. But for right now, I love crypto options because it's 24-7. You don't have to be on a U.S. time zone or a European time zone. If you're living in, you know, Chiang Mai or something, you, you got crazy hours. Forget that. You know, crypto is 24-7. It's easy to set up an account. It's kind of this universal currency. No problem. And there's only two things to watch. So if you're just beginning, you don't have to be watching a thousand things. You know, just two things, you know, no problem. They give us plenty of opportunities. Yeah, and that, that is the good thing, you know. I mean, there is yeah. there is so much to do out there and to understand. Um, I mean, you cannot understand anyway all of this, you know. You need to mm -hmm. focus focus on one thing and what yeah. what works with you as a, as a human being and, and just go for it. Like I said, for me, it's uh, crypto invest, investing. Yeah. And it can be, mm -hmm. you know, it can be anywhere from from six months to three, four years, which I where I don't touch anything, for example, you know. So mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. option is as well very near to that. But you know, when you look at trading, it's not like that day trading or even scalping. It's uh, it's a whole other scenario. So your method definitely is something you claiming is working hundred percent and can. Obviously, if you treat it correctly. You know, there is there is always yeah. these little things what yeah. you need to respect, and you should yes. listen and not go on your own. I learned this as well, you need because I fell I fell very deep as well when I didn't listen and I said, okay, today I give you an example. Okay, there was this Luna thing, yeah. Uh, you heard about Luna, Luna going down, yeah, sure. and everyone was like, I, I didn't invest in Luna at all. So there were people like hundred million, I don't know how much, and it was it was terrible thing. So when this thing went down. At some point, it went to, I don't know, to zero something. 
and I'm like, hmm, that looks that looks fishy, you know. Let's 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 put let's let's put in some stuff. I'm sure it, it has another a last a last spike, you know. And the last spike came, and I was on there and click 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 higher 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 until you know ten thousand or something, and then in one go everything went down again, and I I, mm. I, I went into minus. So this is this is just one one example of uh, uh, when you of emotional trading, what you should never do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and stay very far and listen because the, many people said, no, don't do it. Listen, yeah, yeah. always listen to the ones who know what they're sure. doing, like you, Shane. Sure. You know? And what I'm going to show people today is very counterintuitive. It's not what you think. What, what, it's not what you think I'm going to show you. Uh, it's it's going to be different. So um, d different way of looking at things. Great. So, do you have some some kind of a? Yeah, um, yeah. I've got a slide deck. Time. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. It, I'll start through that. Like I said, it's going to be long, a little bit long. I'll go as fast as I can. I'll have to give you some some background and some and some context first. Then we'll get Sounds into good. the content. But I got to do that so that, so that we understand from the basics. That's okay. Good. Let me just go ahead here and. Set this up. So I need to share my screen here, right? Yes. Present. Hang on a second. Share screen. Okay. Gave me a bunch of tips. Okay. What the heck? Hang on. The StreamYard, it's changed since the last time yes. I've used it. It's been it a did. long it time. Did. It did. Uh, General hotkeys. Here we are. Okay. You got it. Uh, Perfect. Let, without let without without even add to screen. Okay, got it. Okay, so should I make good. this? Um, is yeah, this you, what, you, do you see? It? I see it. I see it. You can just continue. the The pages will flip now. Um, we got it nice and clean on the screen. Ah, okay, okay. I don't even have to move this other thing around. Oh, this this is different. I like the way Streamyard's done. Yeah, that's why it's very easy. It's very easy, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Okay, I've got my notes over here just in case I need them. But uh, cool, 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 cool. Let's uh, let's get started then. Okay. So basically, what I'm doing here is it, it, it's a step by step little workshop. It's designed for anyone. If you don't know the first thing about options, as you've even never heard of an option before, that's fine. This is kind of quickly and it, as quickly as I can and as easily as I can. Uh, Going to take you through these professional option strategies. I've been a professional trader for well over 20 years. What I'm going to show you is designed for consistent income generation. We're not trying to hit home runs. This is consistent income generation. It's a side hustle. As I meant, it's kind of a forever thing. Like this isn't going away. I've been doing it, for, you know, since the nineties. So it's, it's not going away. So before we begin, uh, I can't compress all these years of knowledge and experience into a single call. I'm going to do my best to distill it, but I can't compress it. And that's probably pretty obvious. We're going to go on a little bit of a journey. This is kind of a workshop. I don't like to use the word webinar because it's not really webinar. It's, it's, it's an actual workshop. Um, but I can't tell you, you know, at the end, if you want to join me, you, you can. Great. But I can't tell you that unless you understand what the heck I'm talking about. So that's very, very important to me. So really, this is a crash course. I'm going to give you a crash course. So get ready for a little bit of a ride. But I want you to be at ease here. Most of you, I suspect, are going to be a little bit out of your comfort zone. We all know the comfort zone chart. You know, that's where the growth happens when you feel uncomfortable. Blah, blah, blah. It's actually true, even though it's kind of cliche. You know, it's very, very true. That's where the magic happens. But a little bit of time is going to be worth it. I think a lot of you are going to love this. I've got an over a 90% win rate year over year over year over year. Average is over 90%. Not because I'm a genius, but because I've got the system, Okay. I regularly return over about 30% per quarter, you know, sometimes less, sometimes more, but you know, let's say a good average, a good solid average. I'm perfectly happy with it. If I return 12%, I'd be happy with that too. I really am. This is a side hustle. Remember, we're not hitting home runs here. Uh, my partner, he, uh, when he first started back in the early, maybe in early 2000s, I think in 2003, he turned 50 K into a million bucks, less than two years, same strategies. Um, but this is not a get rich quick scheme. I'm, I, I want to be very, very clear. I'm not you know, peddling some hype lottery ticket crap. This is stuff I do every single day, day in, day out. And it can be scaled to any degree you want. Okay. Um, 
I'm very serious about this. This is a this is knowledge. This is this is what I've been doing for years. Okay, but one thing I do know for sure is anyone can do this. Uh, we've been doing it for decades, as I said. It's not going to go away as long as there's functioning markets. This is not going away, and I don't think you know unless there's a nuclear war or something. You know these markets aren't going away. Okay, once you understand it, uh, you know, sure, there's a little bit of a hump of a learning curve. Fair enough. After that, it's basically pure clarity. It's not really that complicated, but I think most people tend to overcomplicate things. I mean, I do sometimes, right? Don't you? I mean, we, we all sort of are, are guilty of that. Again, I want to clarify, this is going to be a little bit challenging for some people, some of these concepts right away. You don't need to understand the whole thing, understand the concept, but you can do this because I did, right? I don't care if you're black, white, green, yellow, man, woman, single, retired, a kid in college, doesn't matter. It does not matter. Anyone can do this. I've seen literally people from every walk of life uh, do this kind of stuff. And I did. And, and I uh, I was the kid, you know, people think, oh, you've got to be a math person. Well, you have to be super good at math. Well, you know what? I was horrible at math. In high school, I had to repeat every year. So I did the, the current, you know, grade 10 math. And I'd also have to be doing grade 9 to pass that. To, and then in grade 11, I had to do grade 11 and 10. It sucked, right? I wasn't proficient at math. Yet somehow, I was a great trader. And I, these big Wall Street companies were hiring me. And I was trained as a, as a prop trader on their floors. They invested lots of money in me. And I made them lots of money. I'm not a math guy. But I was good at what I did uh, for whatever reason. Um, it's funny, actually, I'm going to go back back here because I'll just say this. the best, One of the best traders I know, the absolute best guys. I remember when I was working a trading floor and there's rows and rows and rows of us. You go all these screens like you see on TV, right? We're screaming and yelling, smashing keyboards and whatever. This guy comes in. He's maybe, you know, 19, 20, 21. He was young. He comes in with a skateboard. Okay, skateboard. <laughs> And he gets seated right in front of me. And, you know, for the first few months, he has to learn the system that that, 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 that company had. He had to learn to train by their system and use their tools. And he's getting better and better. And we'd start talking. He, he turned 10 grand into a million in less than a year. And he just kept doing it and doing it. He was amazing. He was just freaking amazing. And that's not something, I'm not pushing that here. I'm just saying that he had he was a special character. I was talking to him one day a few months in, and I'm like, so, um, hey, if trading doesn't work out, uh, what do you think you're going to do? He goes, well, you know, I think I'd really like to be a garbage man. I'm like, what, a garbage man? He goes, yeah, like the guy who rides around the back of the truck. He goes, that looks like a lot of fun. I'm like, uh, okay. Perception. You want to be a garbage man. It just, it doesn't, I'm just trying to show it. It doesn't matter who the heck you are or what your dreams are. You know, the, the, sure. the oddest people could, could, could do this, right? Now, I, I just threw this in because I love it so much. Dr. Wayne Dyer, I don't know if, if you know him. He was one of my favorite people. He died a few years back. He has, he has a, you can watch it on YouTube. Is a movie called The Shift. Every time I'm feeling shitty, I will watch The Shift. About twice a year, I'll watch it. I just feel so good. But he flipped that around. Everybody says, hey, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, he flipped it around. He said, well, you know what? I'll see it when I believe it. So when you see other people do things, when you know there's an opportunity, you'll start to see to see it. So I don't want to go off on this mindset thing too much, but it's it's important. It's important with everything we do. You know this. People who are watching this or entrepreneurs or digital models, whatever they're doing, we, we know this. We know this intuitively. There's, there's nothing new about this. You got to keep an open mind. Um, it's okay to not fully understand everything immediately. What I'm sharing isn't just a bunch of bullshit theory I decided I read in a book or something. I've, I've, I've been doing it, right? It doesn't depend on some type of technology working out. It's here now. It's not going away, as I've said. But if nothing else, if absolutely nothing else, you learn a little bit of new stuff, I hope, uh, introduce to some new concepts and ideas, and maybe it'll spark some action on your part. And that would be really, really cool. Again, some of you are going to find this really complicated at first. Uh, it's normal. It's totally normal to be confused. There's a lot of new terminology we're going to talk about. You're not going to remember it all right away. There's new concepts, new way of thinking. It's okay. It's counterintuitive what I'm doing, but it's also why it works. Um, I've been answering questions about this for decades. People always want to know what I, what I do. So I'm just going to address a few of those questions right off the top of the bat. And yes, there is a learning curve. I want to say, though, 
that we love typical retail traders. Now, I'm not making fun of retail traders. I know God bless them. They're doing their best. You know what? But there's a huge amount of people that make an extraordinary income doing what I do or, or variations of what I do. You just don't hear from them, right? They do their thing. They don't talk about it. They're pros. They're working on trading floors or whatever they're doing, whether they work for themselves or for companies. Um, but I love typical retail traders because 70, 90% of them uh, lose and they don't last too long. Some of them will last longer than others, but here's the secret. They're my source of income. I hate to say it. I'm taking their money. Uh, so I never want them to stop. I want them just to keep coming in and making the same stupid mistakes. And I shouldn't call it stupid mistakes. They don't know any better. We don't know what we don't know. When I started, I didn't know either, right? I was fortunate enough to have a mentor sitting beside me who had been doing it forever. Uh, I worked with the CBOE. I, I, I did. I had all kinds of amazing opportunities. And that's what I'm hopefully can pass on to you guys today. But the reality is that, that you know, most retailers are clueless and, and they're destined to fail because they don't have the appropriate strategy. They're doing the wrong strategies to start. And I'll demonstrate that in a little while. They have no system. There's no risk management. You know, all these things you're getting tick, you know, tips from Reddit or from some guy at a barbecue or whatever, wherever. I, who knows what they're doing. But part of me feels a little sorry for them. You know, they come in with really good intentions, but, you know, they see all this money and this wealth floating around and they can grab some of it sometimes, but they quickly lose it. And that's, that's the biggest problem is, is losing it. Um, and taking those big losses, they make a bunch of small gains in one big loss and get wiped out. And that's a typical pattern for most retail traders. So we're not doing what most people do. Um, you're going to learn to think and act like the house in a casino, not like the player. You're going to sort of have to reframe the way you think about trading or, or what you think about the industry over time, though, because the house always wins. We all know that. You, know, you go to Vegas, and they have these beautiful giant casinos, not because they're, you know, super, super generous and loving people. They make money and the odds are on their side. So let's let's trade like they do. So who we are, I'll go really quick through these slides. Uh, I'm Shane Oglo. My partner there on the right is Richard Hodges, uh, Road Traders from Road Trader Academy. We've done a ton in the financial world, world over the years. Now, this is, you know, this is what I envision myself looking like because I've been doing this since the 90s, right? I'm getting a little bit old. So this is kind of what I, I kind of think I look like. But the reality is, okay, let me add that fantasy. Um, on a serious note, you know, as we all age, we have a lot of battle scars from life. So life, life, is, life is hard sometimes. And uh, our cumulative experience, both internal and external, it's, uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And I can share stuff with you from that. So education, I, I've, I've sort of done it all, you know, in sort of that trading corporate world. I have so many designations. It doesn't even, doesn't even matter. I wish I... I wish I had these just come up, auto come up so I can blast through them. But, you know, I hung out with the Wall Street gang and lots of parties at the NASDAQ overlooking Times Square. It was good. It was fast paced. I learned a ton, a ton in a few short years, um, you know, th th that I was uh, doing that stuff in New York. I worked TV Waterhouse Retail, uh, uh, Order Flow, Options Retail Overflow. I worked with CBOE. Uh, I designed training and trading for banks. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, yeah, engineers, trading, execution software, did lots of that kind of stuff back in the day. But most of my career was spent with proprietary trading firms, equity scalping, not, not options. I always did options on a side, and, and I mostly trade private capital. Um, so, you know, let me go to the next slide here. Everybody who asks me, they're like, proprietary trading, what's that all about? Oh, that sounds exciting. That's like the Wolf of Wall Street or the, you know, billion, you know, the, the show Billions or whatever. Yeah, it is. It's quite cool. It's, it's a total shadow world. It, it's, it's hidden. Um, you know, every firm has its closely guarded strategies and secrets uh, and secret access to information that, that I can't divulge because we're all under privacy agreements. But, you know, they'll, they'll have unfair advantages. You know, they'll co locate their servers next to the exchange. The, 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 there's just so many things. They have access to the highest technology and, and, and the, most, the smartest people coming out of MIT doing, you know, breaking numbers and supercomputers and all kinds of crap like that. So we can't, I can't compete with them doing that same style of trading because I'll lose. You know, sitting here in my office, what the hell am I going to do? I'm, you know, half a second behind. I might as well be an hour behind, right? So that's not going to work. Nothing can, can be done about it except, you know, learn and, and uh, just carry on. So they've got that advantage. That's fine. But I've had good success. Uh, you know, 1998 to about 2010, I was full-time prop trader. 
Um, you know, after that, I, I, I dabbled in e-com and I just traded on the side before I, I went back to trading. But I traded a lot of stuff over the years. I mean, most financial instruments, I didn't trade a lot of FX, uh, but most of my trading came with options. Uh, certainly most my most consistent trading came with options. My biggest money years back when I was young and really hard work was with equities, but consistency came with options. And the strategy didn't change much, just little adjustments. Hey, we're in a big bull market. We're going to make a little adjustment, big bear market, little adjustment. Not, not a big difference. It was a good living. It was a good living. It was, it was exciting and funny. You can see I've got my daughter in all my pictures because, of course, my kids, I've got five kids, but uh, they're the loves of my life. Um, yeah, I know, right? Amazing. I, I, can't, I, I can't say no, Omar. That, that's my problem. But successfully, you know, year over year, I had about 90% win rate. Uh, you know, some years better than others. But, you know, I trade mostly other people's money. I don't really trade my own money very much. I never have. Uh, it's a psychology thing. Um, it's always been that way for for twenty something years. I actually have other people trade my money. Typically, I, I do have some small accounts I trade on my own, but for the most part, I have other people trade my money. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the last quarter where I extracted all the other trades out, and I just showed you the trades of the strategies that I'm going to show you today. This is Bitcoin. I didn't trade Bitcoin all that much in that in that quarter. You know, what's six percent or something? Okay, six percent. I'm not going to base a webinar on 6% because most people be like, ah, 6%. I don't care. What? One small account, 6%. Didn't trade it very much. Here's Ethereum. Last quarter there. Put the numbers up a little better. 32%. I trade this more ac accurately or, or, or actively. That's a pretty decent. I'm very happy with that. Like I said, if I'd done 18%, I would have been happy with that too. Because every quarter will give you different um, different scenarios. Sometimes there's not a lot to trade. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, there's trades coming out of the yin yang, whatever. I just take with the market. I never force it. I never force it. That's that took me a long time to learn that lesson. Okay. But I'm happy to, to, to give whatever the market takes me. If I have a safe, safer, Risk adverse, low stress, low time commitment strategies. That I'm going to show you. Why not? I'll take 32% all day long. Oh my God. Now, the one thing I can talk about here is I can't show you the accounts I trade for other people. Okay. I'm under lock and key with that type of stuff. Um, as I said, my rate hasn't changed much over the last few years. These strategies, the strategies are very consistent. There are some hiccups from year to year. But the reason why. I, I talk about the last quarter is being um, a, a professional trader is a lot like being an aircraft carrier pilot. Nobody gives a crap how good you did five years ago or your landing, three landings ago. Your last landing is the only thing that matters. Did you land the last one? Okay, you're good to go. So I don't want to talk about what I did in 2003 because it's completely irrelevant. Uh, same with the guys I knew in the e-com space. They're like, oh, yeah, back in 2004, I was doing this stuff. So it's a completely different landscape now. Like, like it's, it's absolutely irrelevant. Um, so that's why I just I just focus on um, the last quarter. What else do I got here? Okay, win rate. Uh, what I'm going to show you today, it's what I do about 90% of the time. So it's sort of a no-brainer. Uh, and it doesn't require you to stare at the screen all day long, which is something that most of us don't want to do. As a young guy, I didn't mind doing that. Not so much now. Or if you're working full time, you know, who wants to stare at the screen all day? It's bad for your eyes, right? My partner, Richard, I went through his, his slides. Now, look, Richard's a super nerd guy. Okay, he's a super nerd. I'm the trader. He's always crunching numbers and doing crazy stuff. I, half the stuff he does, I just shake my head and walk away. But right now, he also works as a head of a structured products at a wealth management firm, systematically extracting value from mispriced instruments. You know, so he's he's doing a lot of arbitrage. Um, he was head of risk and, and markets for an options exchange. Uh, he was one of the pioneers of impermanent loss. I don't even I'm not even going to get into what the heck that is. It's absolutely irrelevant for what we're talking about. But he's been doing this for about twenty five years. Um, He's, he's, he's a great guy to have because he gives me that really analytical side. Sometimes uh, I'm trading based on patterns, and that's why I was so successful not being a math guy. I was really good at recognizing patterns. You see the same thing over and over, and it's like slap in the face, like, duh, you know, so I jump on it. 
but he's got a way to, to kind of qualify it with, with numbers. But, you know, he's, he, he, he turned 50 K into, into a, a million in, in about 18 months. Wow. Don't try this at home because <laughs> he prompt, he promptly lost most of it. Uh, and that's was actually his best and, and biggest lesson where, you know, he was mistaking his luck for a skill. Like I said, when crypto was going up, you know, a few years ago, everybody was a genius, right? Well, everybody exactly. makes money in the bull market. So, you know, so basically, you know, we're, we're, we're focusing on, on risk. It, it's all about risk management. That's more important than making, making a good trade. Controlling your risk and capital preservation is absolutely imperative. The only way to increase your wealth is to manage your risk. All right. So hopefully I'm done with Richard. Uh, oh, he's got one more slide here. I'll just, we, we don't need to know what he does day to day because it's super nerd stuff. Let's just go through that. I love him. I love him. Great guy, but uh, I want to get going. All right. I'm going to show you a form of trading today. Um, this is interesting because everybody has some preconceived notions as high risk, high stress, uh, or the ultimate false belief that you have to be right all the time. Nothing could be further from the truth. The markets are random. The markets are random for the most part. There's certain times where the randomness it goes away and, and we can recognize that. We, we can look at that with software, but nobody knows what they're going to do from day to day. I don't know. Uh, guys are trading on the floor. Don't know. Right. Sometimes there's indications or clues. Sure. But nobody knows for certain. Right. So let me show you what people think. Uh, most trading is all about. So I've got this random chart. Well, actually, this is actually a Bitcoin chart, and I'll use this chart later. And way over here on the left, uh, I don't know if you can see this. Is my, my mouse showing up on the screen? Do you see my mouse? No? No, I don't see the mouse. But uh, I see that's the... okay. That's fine. It, it doesn't matter. But when it comes to trading, this is what most people think. And I never like to use charts to look at the past because, you know, Anybody can say anything, right? Oh, you should have bought here, should have sold there. Well, duh, you know, you're looking at a chart. But for demonstrative purposes, I'll show you this. You know, a lot of people say, okay, I'm going to buy here. And duh, obviously I have to sell there, right? And then I'll buy this low and then I'll sell up here and maybe I'll short sell it and then I'll buy it back and, you know, so on and so forth and whatever. That requires being right. And it be, requires being right very precisely in timing and direction. And nobody can do that. Nobody can do that. The pros can do that. Some of them, a few of them can do, but they've got a lot of uh, very sophisticated tools. And they've got their, their, their analysis, their setups, and they're very focused on the markets. You know, they're there all the time, every second staring at it. Fine. Okay. And that's what I used to do too. It takes a lot of energy. What if we turn this all upside down? What if I present an alternative idea? What if we let the market make the move first. What if we let the market lead the dance? Let everyone else try and time these entries and you know, precisely buy and sell, you know, staring at the screen, whatever. So go ahead. Let that big move happen. Then we take some action. And even then, even then we still don't have to be right because we still don't know for, for sure. Sure, a big move has happened. It might keep going. I don't know. But what if we did that? And we still have a very high probability of making money that's what I do. So let's go back to that chart again. And I'm just going to show you an idea. You know, here's some spots. You got the huge move down the left. Like this is this is a crazy volatile chart. Like this is massive, right? That was that massive dump that happened in Bitcoin. Uh, was it a year ago? It's all a blur. It doesn't matter. Yes. It, it keeps screaming it down. Again. Yeah. So this first circle, let's say we just took some action in that general area. The second one, in that general area, it starts going back up. So we're taking action in the general areas, okay? We just wait. We just wait for a sizable move. We base that on a few parameters, you know, and then we take some action in those general areas. Nothing precise, you know, no super specific timings required here. We still make money on most of those trades. I mean, would you think that's interesting? I hope so, because that, that's what I definitely. do. And that that's how I make money, right? So... Question one. I remember I said as I answer these questions, I get asked all the time, is it going to take a long time to learn? Well, it will require some time. But anything worth doing is going to take some time. This is designed as a part-time gig, right? This is something you can do from your phone. You don't have to be staring at your computer. I assume you all have busy lives. But within a few weeks, you should be up and running. 
Some of you might take a little bit longer. That's fine, right? How much time does it take? Well, that's going to depend. You know, everyone's a little bit different, but this is not going to be you. You're not going to be this guy, you know, with like six monitors you know, trying to jump on the next thing and, and, and be right. That's not going to be, I assume, again, you guys have probably have busy lives and you have other jobs. You want this as a side hustle. 30 minutes a week, an hour a week, two hours a week, whatever you want to do, right? The next question is, I don't know what to trade. Should I trade this stock? Should I trade oil? Should I trade Bitcoin? I don't know what to do. You know, well, when we, first of all, it's nothing to worry about. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I put a lot of focus right now on crypto options, especially with new people coming to me and coming through through my system because crypto is sort of a great place to be because it's just Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's the only two cryptos that we'll trade options on because of the very liquid market. Easy to get in and out. Great, wonderful. It's 24-7. You don't have to be awake if you're living in Thailand uh, you're, or wherever you happen to be. You don't have to be awake for the U.S. market open or the European market open or whatever, right? It's 24-7 trading. It's easy to open an account. There's a very little KYC. You know, a traditional brokerage account, if you want to open one up in the States or, you know, in Switzerland or whatever, that could take a couple of weeks sometimes. It's a real pain in the ass. Now, we are. We do do that type of stuff. But I like to start people with crypto. You're, you're not scattered looking at a thousand things. You just got two things. So I always tell people not to worry about that. Um and especially if they're following me, they can just follow what, what I'm doing, choose to take trades I do or whatever they want to do. That's fine. But at least I give them a frame of reference. So they don't feel like they're flying blind, right? And the next question is, hey, how long is it going to take to get profitable? Well, again, I can't answer, answer that. I mean, depending on the person, if you start trading within a few weeks, you know, may, maybe a month or two for people who are, who are going a bit slower through it or have less time. That's fine. At the end, I don't care. I really don't care about this because there's no rush. The markets aren't going anywhere. Just because you see a market move happen today. So market's going to make a move next week too, right? Uh, it's going to make, make, make a move next month. Don't worry about it. All right. So I've got a little bit of mystery and intrigue. I'm going to set you up here before we get into the training. And I hope this is very interesting. So I'm going to show you why I'm able to keep a 90% win rate year after year. Okay. How you get paid up front trading. Yes, I'm serious. You get paid up front, cash in your pocket, money. Now, how do you do this without spending or investing any money potentially? Okay. How to make some of the assets you already own pay you money. How you can be profitable after the market moves, as I alluded to. How you can always have limited risk. And this is very, very important. I don't want anybody to blow up their account or lose 50% or, or stress themselves out. Everything we do is going to be limited risk. And I'll hold you to that if you're beginning. Sure, do I take unlimited risk positions? Sure, but I've been doing it for 25 years. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't risk it. And I can manage that trade. I don't want, ever want you to put you in a position where you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to lose my entire account. Never, ever, ever, okay? So I want to show you a limited risk and how we can do that. And make money regardless of what the market is. I don't care what the market, I don't care what the price of gold does or Tesla or Ethereum. I'll make money up, down, or sideways. I don't care. And that's a nice way to, to, to be. Okay, yeah, so let's just, begin. Just, just to jump in very quickly, because yeah. you, you know, I'm, every morning I wake up, obviously I have financial news, I have crypto news, I have all the, all the news channels uh, blasting in. And the first thing I always hear when there is a problem, retail got wiped out, you know? Yeah. Estimation yeah. was 1 million traders lost everything today. That's horrible, you know? I mean, yeah. you, you cannot live like that. It's like you sleep yeah. and then you wake up and, and because you, you, you did something wrong, you know, you, or you thought somebody informed you that that is going to go up you and it went down and, you know, you lost yeah. everything. And we talk about a lot, a lot of money, you know, so that's definitely not what you don't want to do. Yeah, most people will sort of view it like uh, buying a lottery ticket. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting space to be in. There's a lot of money to be made, but it's, it's, it's the way most people approach it is not an easy way. I'm going to show you the easiest way that I know of. Um, so let's let's kind of open up this door to possibilities here. Uh, pen, paper, get your favorite beverage or whatever. Uh, ask, uh, be prepared to ask questions at the end. I'll have a Q and A at the end, and uh, let's uh, let's rock and roll. Okay. So my goal today, I want you to understand the basics of options. So I need to get into the theory here, but I want you to understand the potential that they have for generating this this consistent income you know, for, for the rest of your life. Uh, I want to demonstrate how simple it can be, even though it's going to sound complicated, and how you can learn this in a really short period of time. And ultimately, I want to give you that confidence to 
to actually start executing trades, you know, really, really small and start doing it and getting a feel for it and say, hey, this, is, this isn't so bad. It's not such a big, scary animal after all, right? So the roadmap here, I'm going to introduce some terminology, uh, what the heck options are, understand how they work, even though it's not how we use them. You need to know how they work. So again, it's a crash course, right? And then I'm going to flip your mindset, flip the way you think about uh, trading and everything you thought uh, was was the, was the way to do it, especially when it comes to during consistent income. And um, then I'll let you in a few secrets on, on the things I've learned over the years. So options uh, allow me to do all kinds of interesting things, um, not, not the least of which I'll be showing you today, but they're very, very versatile. In fact, people often call them the Lego of the financial world because you can construct option positions whether you're a hedge fund manager or you got your own portfolio to, to fit any risk reward profile or, or a hedge, uh, limit your downside risk. You know, they can be do they, they can do anything. They're, they're really quite amazing. They're very cost efficient. They can be extremely low risk, contrary to what most people believe. And uh, they can deliver very, very high returns. There's also innumerable strategies you can do. I, I always start people off with just a handful of, of basic strategies that all kind of revolve around the same premise. So we're not trying to mix different strategies. You're doing one thing consistently. Once you get used to that, then move on to other things. So what are options? Well, because we have limited time, I can't explain all the way they're used in the financial world, and it's not really relevant to what we're doing, but I'm just going to talk about the basics. And you have to understand, as I explain this, this is not how we use them but you need to know this information, even though it's not how we use them, okay? Just understand the mechanics. Once we have a better idea of what we are, then we can move on into the good stuff. So options, there's five, four primary benefits. Low risk, or they can be low risk. They can deliver high returns, provide cost efficiency, and very, very flexible strategies, okay? For most people, options are simply used to speculate on price movements of the underlying, their derivative, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. And there's very good reasons why they're used to speculate on price movements of an underlying asset because of leverage and cost efficiency. But before that, let's just get into a little bit of terminology here just to get things off super, super basic so we talk the same language so you understand what the heck I'm talking about. And you can impress your friends. We're going to jump back and forth as we need to. But first of all, let's talk about bullish and bearish. If I talk about a bull market or a bear market, if I'm bullish on something, I think it's going up. I'm bullish on gold. Well, I think gold's going up. I'm bullish on, you know, I'm going to have a beer later tonight. Well, I'll probably have a beer later tonight. Bearish means I think something's going down. If I think the price of Bitcoin's going down, I'm bearish on Bitcoin. So I'll use these terms all the time. Okay. Long and short. Long means that you've bought something. Doesn't matter if it's a call, a put, a stock, an oil, cryptocurrency. You bought something, you're long that asset, okay? Or you're, you're long that uh, that call or that put, whatever. The opposite is true is for sure. It means you've sold something to open the position, okay? Meaning that you have a short position. Now, if you own something, you own some stock, and you sold it, you wouldn't be short. You'd be flat. You, you wouldn't own it anymore. But if you sold it first you would be short. And the idea, of course, is we want to buy low, sell high, or alternatively, we want to sell high first and then buy it back lower. Two sides of the same coin, right? Stay with me. Now, options are financial instruments, okay? They're based on the value of some underlying asset. It could be a stock in Microsoft, Apple, Tesla. It could be a, a commodity, wheat, natural gas, oil, gold, an indice, the S&P 500, a cryptocurrency. Uh, it, it could be uh, the U.S. dollar. It, it could be anything, right? But it, 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 it's, it's correlated. The price is correlated with that underlying asset. So it derives its price from the underlying asset. That's why it's called a derivative, right? So they drive their value, but they're independent of the underlying asset. So this is sort of the, the classic definition, you know, options are, are these contracts and they give the holder, whoever bought them, the right to do something, but not an obligation to either buy or sell that particular asset at a certain price at a certain day in the future. That's all. Just very, very, it's a very, very simple, simple contract. So if you buy it, you're buying yourself the right. Okay. 
Now, a lot of people think, oh, options, oh my God, options, you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your car, you're going to lose your account. Well, I suppose you could if you, if you did it in, in, incorrectly, but these people just don't understand them. You know, they heard some story or whatever. Can they be risky? Yes, yes, they can. But they can also be probably the safest ways to speculate and make money as well, as you'll see. Just like, you know, matches are pretty risky if you give them to a five-year-old. doesn't mean the matches are inherently dangerous. Just don't give them to five-year-olds for crying out loud, right? So we've got this little flow chart here at the top. It gives, if you, if you buy an option, it gives the holder, the buyer, gives the right to buy something or sell something, okay, at a certain price up until a certain day in the future, 30 days in the future, a year in the future, whatever. All right, that's all it is. Two types of options. There's calls and there's puts. That's it. A call, if you buy a call, it gives the buyer the right to buy the underlying asset at an agreed upon price. Buying a call option is bullish. I'd expect the price to rise, okay? So if I am uh, you know, thinking the price of gold is going up, I would buy a call option on gold, okay? Very simple. If I'm trading a put, a put buyer, just at the opposite of, of, of a call buyer, it gives me the right to sell something at agreed upon price in the future, all right? As bearish, if I think the price of something, oil is going down or Bitcoin's going down or Ether's going down, I could buy a put option. If the price goes down, I would make some money. Wonderful, great. So on each side of this thing now, if we're buying a call or a put, our right to buy an underlying asset would be a call. And on the right-hand side, we have the right to sell an underlying asset. That would be a put, okay? All right. So where do these terms come from? Well, a call gives the buyer the right to call it away or buy it from the seller, okay? And a put gives the, the, the buyer the right to put it or sell it to the option seller. So if you're ever wondering where these damn terms come from sometimes, that's why they're called calls and puts, okay? Old, old terms. They've been around for a long, long time. So someone who sells, now think about this. If you buy a call, you think something's going up. Well, there has to be someone on the other side who sells that to you, right? Well, he has to have a different opinion, doesn't he? Of course he does, yeah. So someone who sells or writes a call option, it's also called writing an option, would be obligated to sell. Right? If I have the right to buy it, well, then that person's obligated to sell it at that predetermined price if it's exercised by the buyer, the person who has it long. Okay, This is known as being assigned. The writer is paid to take on the risk of this obligation. Next, someone who writes a put option, as you can imagine, has an obligation to buy, Right, opposite of the person who bought the put option, who has the right to sell it Okay, at a, at a predetermined price up until a certain date in the future. Okay, premium is the next thing we need to talk about. That's just the current market price of a contract. If I say, hey, this, this thing is selling for $5.50, well, that's the premium, okay? That's the premium, that's all there is to it. Now, it's the income that's received by the seller. Now, this might be making you think a little bit, going, okay, hang on. So if I sell an option, I get some income right away, eh? Okay, that's very interesting. Let's keep that in mind. Now remember, never bet against the house. Never bet against the house. Sounds familiar, right? I already talked about it. Like a casino, option sellers will take your bet. They'll take your bet knowing that the odds favor them. That's why they take the bet. They don't take the bet because they know the odds are against them. They'll kick you out of the casino, right? They lose sometimes, but over time, the odds always play out as expected including in the markets. In fact, in the markets, if you look at over long term, six months, a year, two, three, four, five, ten years, they, they're so precise. The odds are so, sure, you could lose five times in a row, but over time, it's going to work out in your favor. If every time you take a trade, it's 80% in your favor, it will work out over time in your favor. Trust me, there's so much analytics on this. So I put together this little, little cute little uh, table here to help people understand with these bears and bulls. Look, if, if you're buying, if you're going long, if it's a call, it gives you the right to buy some. If it's a put, it gives you the right to sell some. If you're an option seller, it's the exact opposite. You're obligated to sell. If it's a call, you're obligated to buy if it's a put. This is the basic mechanics. This is the, We do not use them in this way usually. So 
we rarely or almost never use them to buy or to sell an underlying asset. Okay, we're just trading the options before they expire. This is simply to understand them, okay? It seems complicated if you've never heard this before. Whether you're buying or selling and these rights and obligations and having to deliver the underlying is, ah, it's important to know these mechanics, okay? And it will get easier. But for us, honestly, it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect me. Don't worry about that. Next thing I want to explain is cash settlement. We're almost done terminology here. If there's any value in an options contract at expiry, then the profit of that would be paid to the buyer of the contract. Okay? Most crypto options are cash settled, as are index options and many commodity options. And this makes things very, very straightforward. And the reason they exist is it eliminates a lot of expense. Can you imagine you're trading options on the S&P 500? The S&P 500 is a basket of 500 stocks. And you had to deliver that on options expiry or receive it. I mean, you have to calculate that. that it's insane. Or you're trading, you know, oil or sugar or, or wheat. What, a truck's going to back up to your house and here's your oil, Mac, where do you want it? I mean, of course not, right? There's insurance and storage and transportation. and uh, It's insane. So that's why there's cash settlement. It just makes things easy um, and, and very, very straightforward. Now, we rarely hold an option until expiration. I teach people rarely, rarely hold an option for expiration. I can't really get into the reasons why we don't do that. It doesn't matter. It's a gamma risk. But uh, that's the time when that delivery or, or receiving takes place. If, if you're trading stocks, yeah, most of those, those trade that way. The options we mostly trade are cash settled. And the ones that aren't, we don't hold them to expiration anyway. So I don't need to worry about it. Okay. So we don't need to worry about all those, those, those complications. The next thing I talk about here is the strike price. That's just that predetermined price where the option can be exercised at. Okay, that's it up until the expiration date. Why they call it a strike price, I don't know. Financial people have to have their own terms for everything just to complicate things or make themselves sound cool at parties. I'm not sure. That's the strike price. Okay, then we've got the expiry or the expiration date. That's just how long the, the contract is good for. You know, it could be 30 days, it could be two days, it could be six months, whatever. There's all these different options series out there with different dates on. Okay, that's all it is. That's a Latin state on which the holder of that option could exercise. If there's no value in the option expired, it's going to expire worthless. And the seller is going to walk away with all the premium received from selling it. Okay, I want to say again, we rarely hold options to expire. That's very, very important. Here on that little chart, Hey, the expiration date, that's the expiry date. Same, same thing, okay? Again, if there's no value in that option at expiry, it expires worthlessly and the seller walks away. You should be going, hmm, hang on a second. Okay, just bear that in mind. Last thing I'll talk about here, I think, I think before we go on to stuff, is exercise date. Um, when you exercise an option, so if you're the buyer and you exercise an option, you're just putting into effect that right to either buy or sell, whether it's a call or a put, the underlying asset in an options contract. Exercising a put option, oh, I know my computer screen just went uh, just went dark here. Anyway, it came back on. I think my HDMI port is. We still, uh, we still got uh, you. We still got you here. Over. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, exercising a put option allows you to sell that underlying asset. At a stated price and time frame. Okay. Exercising a call option allows you to buy the underlying asset at a stated price and time frame. Again, just theory, just theory, just understand the mechanics. And I know a lot of people will be like, okay, hang on. If I buy a call, it's because I think things should go up. If I, if I, you know, that's okay. That's okay. It, it takes a while to get used to it. All right. We must be near the end of terminology for crying out loud. Oh, American and European. This this is not super important, but, but it, it's a factor for sure. An American style option gives the holder the right to exercise that option at any time between when it buys it and an expiry. Okay. A European style option can only be exercised on the expiration date. There's disadvantages and advantages to both of them. Now, most crypto options are European style options. Most options I trade typically are European style options, but not always. All right. What do we got? 
in the money, at the money, and out of the money. Important concept. An option can be either of them. It can't be all three at once. Basically, if it's in the money, it has intrinsic value. We're going to talk about this a little bit more, so I'll explain what intrinsic value is. A call option is in the money if the strike price is below the underlying price, right? The opposite is true of a put option. And I'll, I'll explain this graphically in a minute so it makes more sense. If it's at the money, the strike price and the underlying price are about the same. And out of the money for a call option, if the underlying price is below the strike price. And for a put option, the out of the money uh, asset price is above the strike price. Again, I'll show you here so it makes sense. Let's say we've got a call. With a strike price of 100, this could be a stock, it could be, it could be anything, it doesn't, doesn't matter what it is, it's something which is trading a, a, a trading, and we, we, we have a call option. Well, if I buy a 100 strike call, I want the price to go higher than 100, okay? If I'm the other person on the other side, I sell that call, I want it to stay below 100. Very, very simple, okay? At expiration, if this is cash settled and it's in the money, so let's say it's up at 110, the difference between the market price and the strike price would be the profit to the buyer and a loss for the seller. So it goes up to 110. If I bought this 100 call, hey, I made 10 bucks. Cool. If this is stock, we multiply that by 100 because each option contract uh, contains 100 shares. Okay. Just important to know. Buyer of a call is bullish, wants the price to go up. Seller of the call is bearish, wants the price to go down or at least stay below the strike price. Okay. Now, this is a, a little bit of an oversimplification. I'm not factoring in, you know, premiums paid or received or commissions or anything like that. It's just very, very basic for holistic understanding. If I bought a put, if I buy it, I think it's going down. I want it to go down. Great. If I sell a put, I want it to stay above the strike price. I want it to go up or at least not go, no, not go below the strike price. Okay. Exact same thing. If it's in the money, it's cash settled. Let's say it goes down to 90. Wonderful. If I bought that put, great. I make 10 bucks. Cool. If it's anywhere from 100 above, you don't make anything, right? And the seller walks away with all that premium. A put buyer is bearish, wants the price to go down. A put seller is bullish or neutral, wants the price to stay above the strike price. Okay. Option pricing. Now, this is very, very important. There's intrinsic and there's ex extrinsic value in an option. Intrinsic value is the amount by which the strike price of an option is profitable. So if it's, or if it's in the money, okay, like we just show, showed, if I buy a 100 strike call, it goes up to 110, I have $10 of, of an intrinsic value in that option, okay? So strike price versus the underlying price uh, or the market price. So it's intrinsic if it's in the money, okay? That's the value that any option would have if it were exercised today, right now, okay? So here we've got our 100 strike price. Let's say it goes up to 110. Great, that's $10 of intrinsic value in there. Simple, right? Uh, if the market price uh, uh, of the underlying was 100 or anywhere below 100, that option would have zero intrinsic value. Okay. Same thing on the put side, just the opposite way. If I've got a hundred put strike that, that I bought and it, the price goes down to 90, wonderful. I've got $10 of intrinsic value in that call option. Uh, anywhere above a hundred, that has no intrinsic value. Extrinsic value or time value, as it's more commonly referred to, is the difference between the options price, the premium, whatever it's trading at, and its intrinsic value. And I'll graphically represent this in a second. We could say though that the time value, that extrinsic value or extrinsic value is part of the, the premium, part of its price is associated with the potential for that option to become more valuable before it reaches expiration, okay? So the longer the time to expire, the more extrinsic value it's gonna have because there's more time for it to move around and, and become valuable, right? Now an option can have zero intrinsic value, but still have time value, right? Makes sense. It, it, it can be intrinsically worthless, but still be worth something because there's time for that thing to move. Now, the more volatile an underlying asset, the higher the time premium is going to be. So let's take this example here. We've got an option trading at a dollar thirty, and let's say it's for a stock. The stock is trading at fifteen dollars, and we happen to buy a, a call option at four, uh, with a strike price of fourteen. Well, it has a, a dollar of intrinsic value in there. That's that's what it's worth. If I exercise it right now, boom. It's got at least a buck in there. 
what's this extra 30 cents all about? Well, that's the time value. Maybe it's got a week to expire or, or, or a month or, or 60 days or whatever. It, it depends on the volatility. But that's that, that extrinsic or that time premium that's built in, that uncertainty. Okay. Now, here's a very simplified chart showing what's called time decay. And this is actually for an at the money option. As you can see, it's not linear. It doesn't go down in a, a straight diagonal line, right? It kind of goes across and then kind of falls off of a cliff. As the option nears expiration, it starts to erode or decay very, very rapidly. You know, once it hits a 60-day mark, it starts to go a bit faster. 30-day, it really falls off a cliff. And that, that can work both for you and against you, depending on whether you're long or short. Now, consider this. Where the options decay is steepest, right near where expires, expires near zero days, what would you prefer to be doing? Would you rather be holding that long? Or would you have rather hold that short? Would you have rather been an option seller? So you probably want to be an option seller because the time decay, the, the value of it is decaying super fast. It's going to be worthless very, very quickly. And that's good because we want to sell high by low. But if I bought an option, I typically want to be on the left-hand side where the time decay is slow, right? I've got time. The price starts to move for me. The time's not eating away at that option. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, so options pricing. Volatility is also very, very important, and that's how much that underlying asset moves around, that the magnitude of its swing in price over a short period of time. If I look at a you know, Bank of America stock versus Google or something, uh, or, or, or compared to Bitcoin, you know, there's a lot of difference in volatility between these different assets, and that's going to affect greatly. In fact, it's one of the biggest factors in determining the options price. Most people are scared of volatility. We love volatility. In fact, we technically, what we do at Rogue Trader Academy is we sell volatility, okay? We don't look at the price. We actually look at the volatility usually. Now, I'm not going to tell you to do that. I want people to look at the price uh, until you get more experience. Anyways, let's move on. Volatility and time play a big part in the price of an option. Okay, the more volatile something is, pool, the premiums go through the roof. And that just makes sense, right? If, if, if we've got this thing that's moving around like crazy, if I'm going to sell an option for that, I want, I want big bucks for that thing because I don't know what the heck it's going to do, right? I'm going to pay up. I'm going to ask for a high premium. So you'll see that in an options price. So on the left-hand side, you can see these, you know, these big mountains, these big valleys. And on the right-hand side, you've got like a low volatility asset just kind of, you know, Cook it along there. Volatility changes too over time. I mean, volatility equals risk, really. That's why the premiums are higher. There's more risk, right? If I'm writing or I'm selling an option, I want to sell high, buy low, right? If I'm buying an option or I'm buying volatility, I want to buy low, sell high. Now, sometimes you'll be on this chart on the left. Think I'll be moving around like crazy. Wonderful time to sell, especially if that's not normal for that underlying asset, because eventually the volatility is going to, going to shrink and come back down. Premiums will shrink. We'll buy it back cheaper. Bobby's your uncle. Money's in our pocket. We, we look for the next trade. Okay. Uh, a little more terminology here. Uh, leverage. Now, the definition is using borrowed money to increase the risk. Now, I, I don't borrow money. This isn't about borrowing money. You don't have to borrow money. That's just sort of the definition. It's about leverage, right? Now, option contracts very interestingly have built-in leverage. It allows users to make nearly the same profit and certainly higher ROI than they could by trading the underlying asset itself by in using less money to do so. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works and why people prefer to trade options versus buying a stock or buying Ether or buying gold. Trade options on it, man. It's way, way easier. Now, there's reasons why you might want to buy those underlines at certain times. Absolutely sure. The dividends are, you're going to hold on to it 25 years or something. Fine. You know, great, great. Go ahead and do that. But let's make a comparison and you'll understand leverage. So let's say you want to trade ETH. Okay. You think it's going up and let's say it's 2,500. Right now, people would, would be happy with it at 2,500. I'm sure a lot of people would. Definitely. Let's just say it's 2,000. Yeah. See, 2,500 bucks. Okay, you could shell that money out. Boom, buy ETH. Great. Or you could buy a call option. 
with a strict price of let's say 2,500 and you pay hundred dollars premium for this, you know, quote unquote bet that's going to go up. Cause you're not going to buy ETH at 2,500 outright. If you don't think it's going, if you think it's going down, well, why the hell are you buying it now? Right. You, you wouldn't, right. You, you have an expectation it's going to go up. So it's the same thing. So let's take a look here. We buy ETH $2,500. It goes up. Yay. You know, happy days. It goes up to $2,700. bucks. we are up $200. Cool, right? So we bought it. Now we have unlimited upside profit potential. This thing could go to $10,000, right? It could go anywhere. Who knows what, what, what it might do? And we have unlimited time. We could hold on to this thing for 10 years. If ETH is still around in 10 years, I don't know if it will be. But if it is, hey, we still got it. The cost is $2,500. That actually represents our risk, too. Because it could go to zero. That's our cost, two thousand five hundred bucks. Made two thousand five. Uh, we made two hundred dollars, right? It's worth twenty seven hundred. If we if we sold it, we'd make two hundred dollars. If we sold it, had to put up twenty five hundred bucks to do it. Though, let's look on the other side. Same thing. We buy a call option, two thousand five hundred dollars strike price for a hundred dollars in premium. Okay, cool. We still have unlimited profit. Upside, but we do it for a limited time. Maybe this is a 60-day option or a 90-day option or, or it expires in you know September or whatever. Okay, fine. Cost is one hundred dollars. We made a hundred bucks, right? Went up two hundred dollars, we paid a premium of a hundred dollars. So you put a hundred dollars in our pocket, we doubled our money. Look at the ROI compared to putting down two thousand five hundred to make two hundred bucks. That's the built-in leverage of options. Okay, but this is still not what we're doing. This is not what I teach. Do I do this type of stuff sometimes? Occasionally. Occasionally I'll buy naked like this. Not usually. But you need to understand the principle. This is what attracts the retail crowd. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to buy these cheap options. And, oh, my God, what if it goes up? Well, yeah, let's go buy a lottery ticket. You know, sure, one in every 10,000, it'll do that. You know, I'm sure you'll be out of money by then. Again. I have techniques where I do this. Maybe I'm trading near-term expiry options or zero uh, days to expiry options. Uh, there's reasons why I'll go long calls and puts. They're not always, sometimes for hedging. I don't want to get into that. I don't, I don't want to mind the waters, but this is not what I'm teaching today. This is just to show you how most people get pulled in, okay? Now, this is really significant. If you're trading Bitcoin or you're putting Google shares, is something really, really expensive? Holy crap. I mean, you're shelling out some Big bucks. You know, if you want to buy one Bitcoin, you don't have to buy one, of course. You have 20K to buy it outright versus buying an option. Maybe the option's 800 bucks. You know, it, it's it's a big, big difference. Okay. But largely because of leverage, speculation is really widely used by traders. You're betting on price changes or maybe the lack of them. Okay. As, as I'll show you, purely for the purpose of generating profits. They're fast. They're easy. They're liquid. There's a lot of participants. Uh, it's, it's just an easy way to, to speculate on price movements. And you're not tying up the capital, like plunking down 20 grand on buying a Bitcoin. Okay. So let's understand the mechanics here. Um, I don't want to give you a simple idea of what selling options look like from a risk reward, a graphic, a graphic way of looking at this versus buying the underlying asset. Now, bear in mind, once again, I keep saying it over and over. This is not what we normally do. We don't normally buy and sell options in this way. This is just to demonstrate for understanding, okay? We'll compare buying or selling the, that asset, underlying asset, whether it's a stock, gold, it doesn't matter. Cryptocurrency does, doesn't matter versus using options, okay? So take a closer look here. If we buy an underlying asset, let's say this is a stock, and we buy it at $50 a share. Okay, fine. $50 is a purchase price. We have unlimited potential. The green arrow, right? It, it could go to $100. It go to two, Who knows where that thing could go, right? Unlimited time, unlimited profit. Your risk is $50 a share because it could go to zero. Who knows? The CEO could get arrested, you know, for, for fraud, you know, tomorrow. And, and the, those shares will plummet. Who, who knows, right? These things can happen, right? That's, that's your risk reward profile. It's a very simple one. Let's look at buying a call instead of buying the underlying asset. Well, to do so, we have to pay a premium. So in this case, let's just say we pay $2.50. Again, if this is a stock, we'd multiply it by 100. So it'd be $250. Okay. We're in the hole right off the bat because we had to shell out a little bit of money. But that money we paid is the maximum we could lose. 
We could be horribly wrong. And this thing can go to zero. doesn't matter. We'll only lose the $2.50 premium we paid. If I own the underlying, holy crap, I'd be taking a big loss, right? We still have unlimited profit, unlimited upside, only for, for the life of the option, though. But we have a break even. We had to pay money. So if we pay $2.50, we have to add that to the strike price. So it needs to move above $52.50 in order for us to start to realize any profit, okay? Let's look at selling the underlying assets, short selling. A lot of people don't understand short selling. If I think Microsoft's going down or gold's going down or Bitcoin's, I could just sell short. It's basically selling first and buying later, okay? Or buying hopefully at a lower price later. Same thing. I could sell this thing at 50 bucks. It can go down. I, I can only profit because it can only go as low as zero, so it's limited profit. But I have unlimited risk on the upside. This thing can go up against me and cause me a lot of financial pain. Naked short, it's called naked short selling. We don't have protection. It's very, very dangerous. And a lot of accounts get wiped out because of this. If I thought that it was going to go down, I could buy a put. I go long a put. Same thing as buying a call, except we're going the other way, right? So I pay a premium. I shell it out of my pocket. Boom, I pay my money. I'm in the hole a little bit. So I have to, I, my break even is 47.50. But if it goes against me, if this thing goes up to $100, I don't care. It can go to a million dollars. It can go to a gazillion dollars. All I'm going to lose is $2.50 per share. That 250 bucks, that's my maximum risk. So that's the nice thing about options when you're buying limited risk and really good profit potential. But you have to be uh, correct in both timing and direction. Now let's look at a short call. So I know bu buy a call. If I think something's going up, well, someone's on the other side of that transaction, right? They're selling it. They're taking on their risk to assume that. So when I sell something, I get, I receive that premium from you. You give me the $2.50 per share. I'm like, oh, thank you. Put that in my pocket. So I add that to my break even. So this thing can go up to 5250. Beyond that, I'm going to start to lose. And it can be very dangerous because this thing can go to a hundred bucks. It can go to a million bucks, right? It can do anything. Well, technically, this thing can go to infinity, but I've never seen a stock go to infinity. If you, it's never going to happen. Here's the other thing: is you can see on the green side, we have limited profit. When you sell an option, your profit is limited to the premium you receive. You can only keep 100% of the profit. If I sell you a car for ten thousand dollars. That's the maximum I can make from selling that car, right? I can't make, you know, 11000 a month later. I sold the damn car. It's done, right? So that's it. If I look at a short put, again, taking the opposite side. If someone thought it was going down, they'd buy a put. I sell it because I don't think it's going down. I receive that premium goes in my pocket. My break even goes to forty-seven fifty in this case because $50 minus, uh, $50 minus $2.50. Cool. I do have limited risk because it can only go down to zero, but still it's, it's a pretty big risk. And I have limited profits. Again, when you sell, you've got limited profits because it could only be uh, the, the premium you receive. Okay? Anytime you sell naked, the risk side outweighs the reward side if it's left naked. So let's take a look at how this works. If I'm buying options, I have a directional bias. I think it's going to go up or down. I've got a directional bias. Otherwise, you wouldn't buy the damn thing, right? You pay your money. Like you're, like, like you're pacing a, a bet, basically. But it must move beyond your, your break even because you had to shell out some money. So you've got to add that money to whatever the strike price is, okay? So it's got to move past your break even. And time is working against you. Remember we talked about time decay. Every single day, it's every single day of a life of an option. A little bit of time decay eats away at it, eats away at it, eats away at it. Until it gets close to expiry and it starts to eat away at it very, very quickly. So time is working against you if you buy options. You've got that nice built-in leverage, but you must be right. You must be right on both timing and direction. Otherwise, you're not going to make money buying options, period. Now, if you're selling options, a little bit different. Less of a directional bias. You can be kind of neutral. You don't need to be, you know, quote, unquote, right. You know, if you're horribly wrong, yeah, you're going to lose money and we'll have to adjust. We're going to talk about that in a minute, actually. It's kind of like horseshoes and hand grenades. You just need to be close. That's it. That's it. You collect some cash up front, which is pretty damn cool. Time is working for you because you sell the option and every day it becomes worth less and less and less. Wonderful. I can buy it back at a cheaper price. Thank you very much. You're able to fix them. That's right. I'm able to fix them if I'm wrong. I don't always do this. We'll get into this in a second. 
So that's kind of a wrap for the, the basic functions of both buying and, and selling options. Just remember, whenever you buy a call or a put, you've got that strong directional bias um, and you need to be right on both timing and direction. When you sell, you've got less of a directional bias. You don't have to be as right, um, but it has its own sets of risks, which we'll get into in a moment. Okay, now let's get into the good stuff here. I promise here, again, if some of the people have never heard of options, you know, you're probably your head swimming a little bit. I, you can learn this. It's it's just a matter of a little bit of a repetition and it'll become like, like anything else you do regularly, like we're riding a bike, right? Not only do it, you can learn to excel at it, especially if you have, you know, the right examples and mentorship in your corner, you're, you're fine. I need you to trust me a little bit here. Again, we'll go back to that trust chart. You might be out of your comfort zone going, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this, Shane. That's fine. This is where the magic happens. So now what? You've got a basic idea of what options are. You know that they can be used in a lot of different ways to generate income. Okay. So I want you to forget everything I just taught you. Sort of. Sort of not really. Don't forget it. But we don't need to worry about it for what we do. First off, because um, the options that the we trader cash settled. A lot of people are worried about the expiry and having to deliver something or receive something. Forget all that. We're trading stuff that's cash settled. It doesn't matter. If it does go to an expiry, which we rarely do, if you're up, you'll have money in your account. If you're down, it'll be debit free. It, it, it's, it's simple. It's dead, dead, dead simple. Okay. Most of what we're doing is we're just buying or selling these options during their life. We really take them to expire. You know, we buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low. At least that's the goal, right? So we want to do. But we're going to look at how I, I view them, and I think this is going to change the way you, you view. We sell options 90% of the time. 90% of the time, I will sell options. Very rarely do I buy. There's certain times when I buy, absolutely, for all different kinds of reasons, but most of the time we're selling options. We drive consistent income by selling options, not buying them. Buying them is what retail traders do, the inexperienced do. Remember, when you buy, you got to be right. Timing and direction. How some newbie coming off the street just opens his Robinhood account, no timing and direction. He doesn't. That's why he loses. It's a sucker's game. He sees it, looks like a lottery ticket. Don't go in there. Again, I'm not trying to beat up on the retail traders. Uh, they don't know what they don't know. But the great thing about selling options is you collect that premium up front. You get paid in advance. I like that. I'd rather get paid up front and then try and keep as much of it as I can rather than, than sort of, uh, you know, buying and, and uh, you know, praying to God that, that it goes my direction, right? We don't need to be exactly right. We don't need to time things precisely. Hey, if you've got good timing, it makes your life easier for sure. But time is working for us. That's a very, very important factor. It's a far more relaxing and part-time way to trade, okay. Let's take a look at this chart again. Let's go back here. This time, let's forget about the little things where I'm going to buy here and I'm sell here and buy here. And so, I don't know. I don't know what the damn thing's going to do, right? And let's look at things from an options seller point of view. When to enter these trades? I mean, if we're talking about trade entry, that that's an entire session on its own. I can't I can't really cover um, the way we sort of decide. Hey, it seems like a pretty good time to get in or to get out. Um, the only thing I will say is the odds are always in our favor. Every single time we enter a trade, the odds are in our favor. Now that that those odds might change in you know one, two, three, four, five days. Sure, that 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 can happen absolutely. But when we enter the trade, the odds are in our favor. And we use something called delta, which is one of the Greeks, which is one of those instruments for for, for measuring risk. Um, we don't have time to get into that. But every single trade we do is in our favor. So. Let's just take a look and say, okay, let's let the market make a move and then we'll take a trade. And the trade's going to be actually not a very good trade at all. It's going to be kind of a crappy trade. But we're going to see how forgiving it is when we sell options versus buy. Okay. Especially if, especially if, if you're really, really patient and you have the ability to, you know, let things come uh, to you, so to speak. Okay, so you've got this huge move down. It's like, oh, my God, the world is ending. And that's what people thought when, when that big drop in Bitcoin happened. The world is literally ending. They're like, Bitcoin's going to zero. Okay, whatever. Let's just say that, you know, on this arrow here is, ah, we think, oh, this, this has got to be it. And we're going to catch this falling knife. And, oh, my gosh, we're going to be so right. 
and we decide to sell some puts. Of course, we don't sell it at that price. We sell it at a strike price a little bit lower. You know, we're, we're going to sell strike price a little bit lower. This might have when we sold this, we, this might have had an eighty percent chance of being right. Oh my God, we were wrong. We were wrong, and the damn thing went down. It just poked through a little bit through our strike price there. Hmm, interesting. Okay, but it did pop back up. Let me go back here. Oh no, here. Let me go to uh, this. Let me let me see here. So here's the strike price. This is the Bitcoin charge at the moment, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter what, okay, what okay. Yeah. options are the same. Yeah, because it's the most authentic one, I think, you know, when I look at charts. So the it's most the we mo can really. Yeah, I wanted to show the most volatile, worst case scenario thing I could be and still and still take a crap trade and still, you know, not, you know, you know, I'm just trying to demonstrate something. So there's the strike price. The only place we were really put in a lot of pain was down there at that red circle. It looked like it might be going against us. Okay, that, that might have been a bit scary. Sure enough, it popped back up. We had a couple of opportunities to get out of it profitably. Okay, okay, cool. Hindsight, 2020, whatever. You know, these charts are looking the past, whatever, Shane. I get it, I get it. But let's look, at, let's say we didn't sell up there on the green. We're, we're super greedy. We're like, oh no, I want to let this expire at zero. And we never do that. Let's say you did. Well, the price actually came back down your, your strike price again. A little bit later towards the options expiry now even at those two points even though it came oh my god it came back down to a strike price what's this thing doing is it going to go back down again your trade monetarily probably would have been near flat why because most of the time value had eroded out of it okay and a lot of the volatility had decreased now at this time it was still pretty volatile now let's take a look. Okay, we got all that trade. Now let's push it back up. Oh my gosh, we're going back up. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we got a couple of double tops there. We think, oh, we're at the top of this arrow. Hey, we're going to sell here. We're going to sell some calls here because we don't think it's going any higher. So we decided to sell right there and we sell a call at a strike price up here. Okay, we collect some premium. Well, oh my goodness, the darn thing keeps going against us. It puts us under a little bit of pain, but it does come back. It gives us some great opportunity to, to, to buy it back at a big profit. Now, any trader I know would have gotten out there. But let's just say you're just feeling grumpy and you're like, nope, I want to collect every cent of that premium I made. Well, you know what? The market finds a way to put you under pressure again and scare the bejesus out of you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Again, even though it's against us. And that, that, would, have, that would have been you know, negative against us. But it wouldn't have been as bad as you thought. Because most of the time value would have bled out of it. Now, of course, it ended up coming down. It would have been highly profitable. Again, 2020 high side. I'm just trying to show you how generally, you know, generally, we're not taking very good trades here. It's still pretty damn forgiving. Okay. Now, we've got that pesky risk problem. Now, if I go back here and I look at the top of this chart, what's, let's just think this thing just kept going back up. Oh, my God. Well, that would have cost us a lot of money if we sold those calls at that red line. That's that risk problem. Remember, if we look at that risk reward chart I showed you, we have unlimited risk if we're selling calls. Dangerous stuff, right? Stay away from options, right? Well, no, actually, no. When we sell options naked, there is risk. With calls, it's unlimited. Theoretically, the price can go to infinity. Of course, it's never going to infinity, but it's still going to hurt. And it could wipe out your accounts. So let's not do it. With puts, the underlying price could theoretically go to zero. That's not actually all that uncommon. You know, stocks and things die all the time. We can solve that problem, though. And we can just buy some insurance. How cool is that? Let's put a position on just buy some insurance. Easy peasy, right? We can limit the maximum we can lose if everything went horribly wrong. We were, we we're so wrong that we couldn't be more wrong. Well, we'll limit our risk. We, we know exactly. So we put that trade on, we know exactly the maximum we could lose. So we know that we wake up tomorrow. doesn't matter what the news was. What happened? Eh. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. We sleep at night. And we can make sure it's, you know, 1% of an account or half percent of an account or no more than 5% of an account or, or whatever your parameters are, no more than $200 or $1,000, whatever, whatever you happen to do. We can choose how much insurance coverage you want as well. All right, so things just keep getting better and better. When we're selling options, we do not have to be precisely right. Remember horseshoes and hand grenades, right? 
We can limit our potential loss and our risk, which is pretty damn cool. Um, we can also fix them, as I mentioned. You can fix it. What the hell do you mean you can fix it? You can't fix that chain. Yes, yes, I can. Let's take a look at this chart again. And I, never, I, I zoomed in on this chart. Price is ripping up, okay? We're absolutely ripping up. And we decide that, you know, sort of this uh, top, top of this arrow here is where we decide, hey, it's not going up anymore. And we sell some uh, calls up here with this red line as a strike price. We receive a premium. Cool. Okay. Now that is called a naked, sold a naked call. Dangerous, right? What if the price keeps going up? It might. I don't know. I don't know what the market's going to do, generally speaking. All right. That's unlimited risk. I don't want unlimited risk. Thank you very much. So if we're selling calls, it's the opposite to buying. We don't want the price to go up. The call buyer does. We don't. If it expires or goes down anywhere below that strike price, expiry, we would keep all the money. We keep all that premium received, okay? If it bounces around sideways, I don't care. I'm still going to keep all the premium. If it goes up a little bit, you know, it can go up from the top of this green arrow all the way up to the strike price and just stay there until it expires. I don't care. That's fine. I don't mind. I'm still going to make money. We've got that unlimited risk problem that we have to solve. So what we can do is we can buy a call at a higher price. Cool. Now the risk is limited to the difference between the short and the long strike price. The short strike price is the one we sold, where we earned a premium. The long strike price is the insurance. It's a higher, right? So we're just buying some insurance. Let me just explain this graphically. Price goes up. Let's say I sold this call for five bucks. At the same time, I bought a call with a higher strike price. It'll, it'll be cheaper because of the higher strike price. It's further away. And at 250. So five bucks minus 250. I made 250. So I made less. I made less, but now I have limited risk. My risk is limited between those strikes because if this thing decides to go to the moon, and I'm completely wrong, well, every dollar I lose on my short, I'll be making on my long. So I've limited my risk. No matter what happens, eh, I'm fine with that, okay? Sleep at night. You don't need to fret about it. Next slide. Three out of four conditions we win. Okay, if we do, if we're doing it properly, and probability is on our side. If we sell a call, or, or that that last thing I showed you is called a call spread. Okay, it's called a short call spread, or a bear call spread. Again, why does the financial people have to have all these different terms? I don't know, but they do. So we're right, you know, quote unquote right, and we make money if the price goes down. Cool, we sold it, you know, and, and the price goes down. Wonderful, keep all the premium or keep most of it. So we'll get rid of it before it expires. Price goes sideways. Wonderful. Great. I don't care. Go sideways. All right. Every day, that premium is going to become less and less and less because time is going to decay it. And if the volatility shrinks, it's going to uh, decrease in price as well, right? And the price can even go up a little bit. I could be a little bit wrong. As long as it doesn't go through that short strike or, or maybe more properly or, or break even. Still going to make money. Three out of four conditions. I like that. I like that. I'll take those trades all day long. All day long. The important takeaway here is we completely control the amount of risk. Okay, we're not playing cowboys here. We're not trying to, you know, outdo someone else. It's all risk control. We can tighten. We can we can tighten the, the, the amount of insurance. We we can we can reduce the amount of risk by selling. Uh, if we sell, sell a call by buying a call with a, with a, with a strike price that's closer to the short strike, we can have a looser. We can have more risk, but still have some protection by having it further away, right? That's all it's doing. It's very, very simple. We know the odds in our favor when we enter a position because of delta. I mentioned delta before. I don't have time to get into it in this. We don't have to have perfect timing. Yeah, the better the timing, the better. Sure, you know, you know, that's nice, but we don't have to have perfect timing. We don't even need to be exactly right, okay? What's not to love? But it gets even better. It gets even better, Omar because we can also fix bad trades. I know this is crazy, right? And this is something that you can only really do with options. So that's one thing I never event, heard about. Yeah, so in the event something goes against us, which is gonna happen, uh, we can choose to fix it if we want to. 
and it's called rolling a trade, managing a position, rolling a trade. Uh, let's say we sold a call, and, and I'll show you, a, 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 or maybe I won't show it. Uh, it yes, I, I will. Let's say we sell this call at a $50, you know, it's a 45 right now. We sell, we sell the 50 strike price because we don't think it's going above 50. Uh, wonderful. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, it goes up to 55. Stupid thing. Oh man. Well, we just buy back the losing position and we sell another one for a higher strike price, usually further in the money or for further in the future, oftentimes for a net credit. So we actually make a bit more money doing this. We're essentially buying ourselves more time to be right. That's all we're doing. So let's say here we, we got this. It's coming up. We decide to sell this this call and we collect five bucks. Okay, right, cool. If the price rises to fifty five, we'll just buy the darn thing back at a loss and we'll sell a new one a little further out in time. Let's say it's sixty. Okay, we just bought ourselves more time to be right. Let the market settle down a bit. Let it blow off some steam. I don't know what it's going to do. Now, I could keep doing this over and over and over. And that's called rolling till you're right. Now, I don't recommend that. Um, but it can be done as long as you have enough margin in your account. And we have very strict rules on how to manage margin. But that's how we can do it. And that's how I have a 90% plus win rate. Because sometimes when things go against me, I can choose to roll that. Okay. To a degree. I mean, there are some caveats, such as, you know, if your margin usage is getting high, you know, that's tough to do. Or maybe you have a sentiment change. Maybe I'm like, you know what? No, I think this market's going to keep going up or this asset's going to keep going up. I don't want to keep fighting it. I'd rather just take my limited loss because I'm going to do it as a, uh, usually as a, as a spread. I'd just rather take that small loss and wait for the next trade. But if I think, oh, the market's just monkeying around and I'm, I'm fine to roll it, give myself another 5 or $10 leeway or a hundred dollars depending on, on how big you know what type of asset you're trading and you know add another 30 days to it no problem no problem my philosophy is this i don't know and nobody does what the market's going to do day to day absolutely no one does but i can tell you with a much higher degree of accuracy what it won't do especially after it's just done something stupid or spent an enormous amount of energy let's just say that you know uh, it's ether today. I don't know. You know, it's you know, twelve hundred or something. It makes a move to seventeen. Or sorry, it's uh, what was it, fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred? I, I can't remember. It makes it makes a four or five hundred dollar move. It makes a twenty or twenty five percent move. Whew, that's a big move. Bitcoin does one too. That requires an enormous amount of capital to push that. Makes another move, goes up 40%. Holy shit, we're talking about trillions of dollars. That's a big, big move. To think that that is going to keep doing that and double or quadruple is child's. That's foolish, right? Now, if I woke up tomorrow morning and the Chinese central bank said, hey, you know what? We're getting rid of the yuan. Uh, we're going to make Bitcoin our official currency. Okay. Uh, you know, this thing could maybe go to the moon. Okay, fine. Because you get all, you know the entire world pouring money into it. But you know, if some news player, the Fed talks about this or whatever, you know, who, who cares? You know, these moves typically aren't going to be one-sided forever. You know, so so it's all a bit relative. But once the market spends a lot of energy, especially if we compare it, we've got things to compare it to, you know, the average two range or you know, what's the average daily range, we can start to say, all right. This market started to get big exhausted. We're willing to take a chance and we're going to sell now. We're going to sell some puts. We're going to sell some calls. When we give it, when we still got some buffer room. The probability is on our side. The second we enter that trade, the probability is on our side. That might change. And we can always roll it. We can always fix it if we're wrong. Now, one last idea I'm going to leave you with here is I often will play both sides of the market at the same time using the exact same concept I, ju I just showed you, right? And this can be an absolute money generating machine, especially if we're in a sideways market. And the interesting thing lately is with crypto, especially, oh my God, it makes this ridiculous move and then it sits in a range for weeks. It's just had this pattern. Wonderful. The, my God, there's so much money to be made there doing this. So here we got uh, a portion of that same chart. I'm using the same chart the whole way through. We've got an upper range and a lower range to the chart. 
Okay, roughly. You get this little wick throughs that scare the pants off people. Oh my gosh, it's going on one way or the other. It comes right back down. Markets always revert to the mean, right? It always reverts to the mean eventually. So, you know, let's say it's right in the middle, or sometimes I'll do this as it pops up the top of the range. I'll sell some calls thinking, ah, it's probably going to stay in the range for a while. Okay, cool. And I'll buy a call as protection. Okay. There's my short call spread. But hey, at the same time, I can sell a put at the bottom range and I'll buy a put as protection at the bottom. So I've got two limited risk protected positions that are both earning me money. The second I put them on, cash, money in my pocket. If this thing expires anywhere in between, I keep everything. Now, this is called an iron condor when you put these on at the same time. They have the same, uh, same expires. Now, when I put this on, I always, we, we know the range is going to break at some point, whether it's going to be tomorrow or a month down the road, who freaking knows. But I'm always prepared that once I will get tested or potentially broken. I hope it doesn't. Wonderful. Now, usually when I do this, I won't keep all of the premium. Let's say I make a thousand bucks. I get a thousand dollars of premium in my pocket. Well, I might take that off the table when it gets to 500. I'll just take my 500 bucks and say, oh, next trade. I'll wait. I'll wait till it breaks the range. Or maybe I'll play it long thinking I'm going to, you know, uh, it's going to move one way or the other, and I'm going to make money on the move out. We don't need to get into that now. But that's how we do it. You know, any market, year after year after year after year after year, you know, you know for 100, and, well, the CBOE started in 1972, uh, which would sort of formalize the use of options, but people have been trading options for, for a long, long, long time. This is what the market pros do. You know, I, I know professional traders, floor traders, guys on their market, market makers. This is what they do, right? This is what they do. So what we do in funds that, that, that I've worked for, you know, it's just, it's about longevity. It's about staying in the game. It's not about losing your ass, you know, in one dumb trade that wipes out 80% of your account, which happens to most people. It's sad. It's true. I've had that happen to me when I was younger. Now, part of it was my bullheadedness and part of it was the software not doing what I wanted it to do, but still it was my fault. It was my fault. Longevity, Inconsistent returns is all about capital preservation. It's all about limited risk and just that consistent income, consistent income. That's why I love it when people want to start trading and they've got a regular job. Like, great, keep that regular job. Don't even think about quitting that regular job, no matter how successful you are for the next year. And then we'll talk. Let's just learn this, learn this, learn this. Have some adversity. Have some stuff go against you. Let's learn how to manage that. Great, it's no problem. That's how we learn. It's okay. It's okay. As long as when that goes against you, it doesn't wipe you out, right? So we make money when the market goes up. Uh, make market when money goes down. We can make money when the market goes sideways. I don't give a crap. As long as it's an asset I can trade, it typically has high volatility. I love it. I love it. I love high volatility. Most people are scared of high volatility. Don't let it scare you. Sell. Sell when there's high volatility. Don't buy, right? That'll kill you. All right. So the reality is most people who begin trading, they try to be right. You know, they're buying a call option, they're buying a put option, they got, they got a hot tip, or it's a super cheap option, it expires in five days. I mean, you're trying to predict the market move. You're brand new to trading, you're going to predict the market? Good luck. Good luck. You know, that's why 79% of them fail. They're almost guaranteed to, right? Why, why would they be able to predict the market when the pros struggle to? And they've got all the data and the software and everything else, the indicators, right? So what I'm showing you here isn't sexy. You're not going to make a 1,000%. Because the most we can make when we're selling options is 100%, right? That's the most we can make. But we never hold to, to expiry. So we're rarely going to make 100%. Now, mystery and intrigue. Now, remember this slide when I, when I, when I showed you these things, how I'm able to do all these things? Okay, let me tell you. Well, how I have that 90% win rate? Well, every time I enter a trade, I've got the odds in my favor. It doesn't work out every single time but I can choose to fix a trade. I can roll that trade, right? Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. Now you can see why having a 90% win rate isn't actually so absurd. When I'm getting in with probabilities on my side, and then when things don't go my way, I can fix it if I choose to. I don't always choose to, right? That's why I don't have a 100% win rate. That'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Uh, what's next? Getting paid up front. Well, we can see as option sellers, you get paid up front. You collect that premium from whoever's buying it. 
So I, I think I think Richard uh, put it one day. He goes, "We collect all this money up front, then we fight like hell to keep most of it." <laughs> I don't really consider it fighting, but that's kind of a funny way to look at it. We just try to keep a, a percentage. Of it. Like some, a lot of times, I'll target twenty five percent. If I sell something for a thousand bucks, as soon as the value goes down to seven fifty, well, let's take it off the table. I'll take that two hundred fifty bucks. Thank you very much, and I'll look for the next trade. The risk is off the table. Risk is off the trade. The market just gave me a gift. I'm going to take that gift. Thank you very much. What was next? Ah, yes, how to do this without spending or investing any money or potentially, okay? I spoke a lot about crypto options. I trade them very frequently, pretty much every day. As mentioned, trading options is virtually the same for stocks or indices, commodities, whatever. It's all the same thing. Yes, there's nuances between them, but there's not a big difference. Now, most people, most people I know already have crypto. People in India, the Philippines, and you're, everywhere you can think of, most people have a bit of crypto. What I love about that is there's a low barrier to entry, as I mentioned at the beginning. Anyone can quickly open an account. It doesn't matter where you live. Usually, there's a few countries. is a problem, sure. Um, same assets, Bitcoin, Ether. They're all traded globally. You know, People all know what these are. You can use the crypto you already have, and you can trade options against them. So let's say you've got five ETH. Okay, great. Move that 5 ETH to an options trading exchange, and we can just start to trade options against it. You don't have to deposit a damn thing. Just moving something you already have. Okay, because most people already have some crypto. Most people who uh, talk to me anyways do. Now, this is very similar. <clears throat> Making the assets you already own pay you each month. If you've got some crypto, if you've got some stock, you've got some Tesla shares or whatever, you can sell calls against them. That's called selling covered calls. And you can make them pay you money each month. Okay, now I didn't have time to get into what covered calls in this session. But you can make any existing asset sort of pay you rent each month. I mean, if you own something, um, why not make it pay you something, right? This is very, very common. Funds, people have big portfolios. They sell calls against things that they already own. And that's called a covered uh, what's next here? Oh, yes. I think I demonstrated this. We don't try and predict what the market's going to do. I don't have a bloody clue. Sometimes I'll be, be positioned for a big move, but I don't know if it's going to do it. Usually I'll be on both sides. I don't know if it's going up or down, but if it goes up or down, I'm going to make money either way. <laughs> as long as it does it you know, in a certain time frame, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, That costs a little bit of money, so I don't do it too often. Most of the time, I wait for the stupidity to happen. I wait for people to scream and yell, like, oh, my God, the world's ending. Thank you very much. That's my cue to come in and start selling to you because I, gar I, I don't guarantee, but nine times out of 10, I'm taking their money. Um, what do we got here? Uh, I, I think I demonstrate how we're not trying to time the market. I don't know what it's going to do, especially if you've got a regular job. What are you going to be having a screen over here, watching the market while, while you're working all day? It's too much of a distraction. Check your phone every time you go to the bathroom or have your lunch, whatever. You know, you don't need to pay attention that much. Or check every once every two days, sitting on a beach drinking a Mai Tai. I don't know. Check it, you know, once a day. Who knows? Make an adjustment when you need to. What we're doing isn't precise timing. If the market makes a big move, you don't get in that day, eh, there's usually still an opportunity in the next few days. I mean, you know, we, we take a little bit of a macro view. Do I sell short-term options sometimes? Yes, sure. A lot of times I'm selling them 30 days out, 45 days out, even 60 days out. I don't go too far out usually, but but yeah. So we've got some time, right? Um, you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to have stare at your screen all day. That's you know that's not what we're trying to teach you. We, we can get into that. If you, if you come and join me, we, we, we can get into that kind of stuff. And we're going to start trading gamma scalping and zero days to expiration stuff and all, all kinds of things. Uh, but we don't need to talk about that now. And that's a lot of people don't want to go down that path. Um, it's stress-free. Well, I'm not going to say stress-free. A lot less stress-free. A lot less stress-free. Because you know, sometimes things are going to go against us sometimes. That's, that's you know, reality. So as long as we're mechanical about how we enter, and how we exit, uh, we can always fix the trade, right? So uh, how you can always have limited risk. And I showed you, we just buy insurance. Super simple. Super simple. Buy insurance. Buy as much insurance coverage as you want, but choose that level of protection. And I get to sleep at night. I don't like, I've had plenty of nights as a trader where, oh my God, I was so scared. I was awake all night, constantly checking my phone to see what the futures were doing overnight. And I was, I was so scared. 
Oh, you have to. If you're, in that <laughs> if you're in that position, it means you're doing something wrong. You've exposed yourself to too much risk. And I don't want to ever do that again. Now, sometimes I'm curious, but I know if the market moves, I've got a plan. And um, I, I, again, I usually don't care what the market does. Sometimes I get myself in positions and, and I want it to move a certain direction. But um, if it doesn't, I've got limited risk. So I, I know I'm not going to you know, blow up my entire account uh, if it doesn't go my way. I mean, I think, too, we talked about the market going in a direction. You could buy a put if you think it's going down. You can buy a call if it's going down. We can sell calls. We can sell puts. We can sell those iron condors. If it's in a channel, we can sell on each side. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the market does. We can make money any way you slice it. I mean, we, we really only scratched the surface today of, I think, the possibilities in this very short time that we've had. But if you're going from, from zero, like you don't even know what an option is before I start talking about, I think that I, I've, I've tr tried to put this together to, sh to show you that sort of the hidden opportunity that most people don't realize exists with, op uh, with options trading. I've been doing this for over 20 years. A little bit of effort, a little bit of an open mind, I think you can really, really open some doors. So we learned what options are, what their basic functions are, you know, some new technology uh, or, or sort of terminology. Uh, you know, if nothing else, you'd be the most interesting guy at the next party you go to, right? You learned about options pricing, what affects their price, especially time decay. Most new sellers don't have a bloody clue what that is and why it works in favor of option sellers and against option buyers. Um, I hope that we had some good aha moments or thinking about buying versus selling, right? It's kind of got to flip the way you think about, about trading because most people just think about buying. You know, and usually it's just buying calls. People don't even think about buying puts most of the time, right? You only think one direction. It's kind of crazy. You can be patient. We can let the market move first. We don't have to be right. We don't have to try and time things. Let other people try and predict what the hell is going to happen. I don't know. Then we'll just take their money. I'd rather do that. The second mouse often gets the cheese uh, in my, my line of work, right? Um, you learn that it's possible to make money in any market condition. I don't care if it's up, down, or sideways, and that's about longevity, right? These pro traders are doing that for ages. It's timeless. It's going to continue to work as long as there's functioning markets with people trading them uh, because uh, – Market moves are based on psychology for a lot. Yes, there's high-frequency trading machine. Yes, there's bots. Yes, there's algos now. But there's still a lot of people there's influence. So we're still going to we still see the same pattern. Sometimes they're more exaggerated now. But uh, it's really the same thing. You learned you can use existing assets. So if you've already got some Bitcoin or some Ether, wonderful. Let's just start trading options against that. Make it start paying you some, some cash, right? Oh, so you can get paid first. You get paid up front. Uh, you know, versus paying and then praying that something is going to move in your direction. Remember, when you're buying, you've got to be right on both time and direction. It's a very, very tough thing to do. We learned that we can completely control our risk. There's no need to have unlimited risk or blow up your account. Absolutely no need at all. We can sleep at night. No worries. Uh, depending on your risk tolerance, you can increase or decrease that amount of risk as you become more comfortable. It's completely Flexible. That's what I love about it. Uh, we can fix trades if required, rolling them out in the future. Not everything we do is going to turn to gold instantly, you know, unicorns and sunshine and rainbows and stuff. It's nice to know that we can buy ourselves more time if we need to. Okay. That's pretty cool, though, being able to fix your trade, roll your trade. So finally, we always enter trades with the odds on our side. Every single time, probability is always on our side. It's better to act like the casino rather than the player. Sure, those players will get their long shot wins sometimes, but probability always works out over time. As I mentioned, you can look at any study with options and delta in particular, and it will always come within a percentage point of being accurate over time. That doesn't mean you can't lose a few in a row. Sure, that can happen. Anything can happen. It's trading, right? But over time, it will play out in your favor. So make sure your losses are always limited losses so they don't stop you from continuing continue on and in, in, in trading. So if nothing else, I, I think you, know, you can impress your friends at parties. But uh, I hope during this brief session, you've at least had a, a general concept of what options are.
their use and how powerful they are and how we've been able to make a living off of for decades. So I don't know if you have any questions, Omar. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm really, uh, I was listening the whole time and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's really amazing what you, what you presented to us. And, you know, for me, kind of when I heard into this, um, uh, the security, when you, when you want to buy a new trade or when you turn the trade around or something, or the whole concept sounds for me like a safe way to invest and DCA, um, do, uh, co uh, dollar cost, dollar average. cost average. Yeah. So for well, me, it, sound, it sounds something like that for Bitcoin with, with more options even inside, with more mm. um, security attached and with everything. Like I said, me, I'm, I'm most probably like uh, most of the uh, listeners. I yeah. never dealt with options. I'm an investor yeah. and I do DCA. That is, that is my strategy. Yeah, well, I mean, options aren't really for investors. I mean, uh, investors use them to protect their portfolio. So you, you want to protect, let's say you, you own you know, 10 Bitcoin. You're worried about the price of Bitcoin going down just by puts. You, you can completely hedge your risk off completely. Or you, you could sell, sell Bitcoin futures too. When you talk about dollar cost averaging, though, there is an interesting concept here. Uh, do it all the time. Do it with funds all the time. That's how funds actually pick up stock sometimes so let's say um, I've got a portfolio of you know 50 different stocks and I'm interested in, in you know picking up some Tesla for example uh, or let, let's just say ABC stock because I don't want to you know, pick anyone so let's say it's ABC stock is trading at hundred dollars now like hmm I like this stock we like the long-term prospects we think it could go down a little bit more should we buy it right now should we well you could sell puts sell puts at 95 or 90. If it goes down below that, you get exercise, you're obligated to buy them. I'm happy to buy them at 90 or 95. Perfectly happy. That's called selling cash secured puts. Um, you've got the funds in your account. You're perfectly willing to buy them. You get them for a better price. And you receive the premium from selling the puts. Now, the danger is, of course, if it goes up, you missed your opportunity. And you have to buy them at a higher price. Or if it just kind of bounces around. Uh, you you collect that premium, but you didn't pick up the shares. People sell cash secure puts all the time to pick up the underlying. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of people out there, or there's a few people I know out there who, you know, I don't want to say gurus, but they, you know, they sell themselves that way. And they've got one system. Their one system is selling cash secure puts. They do it for earning income, and that's okay. That's okay. In a bull market. In a bear market, you're hooped. None of these people have been trading for longer than five or six years. And it shows because in a bear market, you get your face smashed in because what you're doing, if you're selling cash secured puts in a bear market, you're taking possession of a toxic asset. They've never been through a bear market. So it's going to be careful just because, you know, it's like you got a hammer in your toolbox. That's your only thing you got. Well, you're going to start hammering everything, right? It's important to have a couple of tools in the toolbox, but it's important to start with not too many. Just start with a few that all work off the same philosophy and premise. You're not you know, doing mental gymnastics in your head. So if we're selling most of the time, let's think about selling. Whether we're selling puts or call spreads, doesn't matter. We'll just put ourselves in that mindset. Sometimes if the market conditions uh, are, are, are such that, hey, you know what? Whew, volatility is too low. We don't want to sell anything right now. We think there's going to be a big move one way or another. Fine. Just sit on your hands and be flat. It's the gift of being flat. Sometimes not being in the market is the best thing. Or... If you really think it's going to move out, buy some calls and buy some puts. That's called a strangler or a straddle, depending on the strengths. And you're going to make money either way it goes. Um, there's so many things it can do in trading. I mean, we could just talk for hours and hours and hours and hours on different strategies. Um, but it's very important for people to keep it simple. If you're working full time or if you've got other things going on, you would want to do it as a part time. Let's just start by selling options. And, you know, that's what we teach people. Um, when, they, when they're just beginning, it's the safest, highest probability. It's opposite of what most people do when they come in, buying options. It's just a, a great way to earn a side income. Um, and I think the overview of what you have given is, uh, I mean, as you said, we scratched the surface. Um, in order to learn more, obviously, you have to go really into the subject and study and, and really like, uh, you know, like a hobby. It's, it needs to be your, your little passion, uh, side, side geek passion. And yeah. I personally really think that you gave a lot of value today. Um, it was very understandable 
because uh, I wanted to test it myself, you know, because like I said, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not really into, you know, stock market or, or anything of that kind. I keep it, uh, I don't say I keep it simple. Um, I'm really focusing on, on Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, uh, Solana, um, all the, all the big caps, uh, actually. And that's why for me, it was interesting to see if I, if I can follow up with it. Uh, obviously I'm interested in that. So maybe my perception is a little bit different, but it's definitely, uh, lots of value here. And, uh, Shane, um, again, I'm really sorry for today. I didn't engage much. I didn't speak a lot. Um, if you can hear, I'm sick audience as well. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit sick. So I just tried to keep my voice down, talking not too much. I didn't want to miss the live podcast for all of you guys. So I hope um, this was uh, very beneficial for everyone here. Uh, Shane, where can anybody can in contact with you who is interested in taking it to another level uh, with their mm -hmm. skills? Yeah, well, you can always reach us at, at roguetrader.academy uh, or Shane at roguetrader.academy if you want to email me. But okay. uh, yeah, check us out. We've, we've got the training, but we've also have a uh, we've got something very unique, and I'll, I'll just do a little plug for that. We have a live interactive, uh, real time trade alerts. Now, yeah, there's lots of people like trade alerts. Your phone goes off, and hey, buy Microsoft or whatever. A lot of times, it's trade ideas. I post every single trade I do in there, good, bad, or ugly. You're going to see it all. But ours is interactive, so you can ask me questions like, Shane, why did you do that? Why did you do it at this price? Why did you do it? like? You know, or if they're having problems, they, they might be trying to do something. They can say, hey, I'm trying to do this. Is this correct? Is it my... Sure, no problem. We can talk. It's that interactive. That's what makes the difference trading is being able to ask someone, to have, to have that confidence, that reassurance that, hey, or just simply watching what I'm doing. Sit and watch me for three months. Don't date, make a damn trade if you don't want to. And you'll see. You'll see my winners. You'll see the ones that go against me, how I manage. Maybe sometimes I sit in my hands and I wait. Sometimes that's a hard thing to do. You see someone else do it, you think, oh, okay, I'm not being crazy. You know, I, I can do this. You know, I, I can do this. Um, so that that's that's what's going to really cut that learning curve for a lot of people. It's just being able to follow, being able to ask questions. And that's what that, that channel's for. It's a Telegram channel we have. It's, uh, it, it's uh, I think it's a wonderful tool. Great. Yeah, Telegram is definitely the, the place to go. Um, yeah, Discord as well is a... Uh... Very nice for a platform, but I think I think for you, Telegram is definitely uh, very good to to gather everyone and to uh, you know to can to be able to speak to 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 everyone who's joining and to have a free mm -hmm. talk. You know, I think it's uh, yeah. very very good. Yeah, Shane, um, I think there is no more questions for now. Uh, thank so you well. again. Your time is precious. Uh, it was a long, um, focused um, workshop. Yeah. Um, definitely workshop, not a webinar. This is a workshop. Yep. This is something on, yep. on another level. And thank you so much uh, for being our guest today. And yeah, let's, uh, let's speak soon about that because this is um, not the beginning. Um, this is going just, just higher and higher and higher. And I'm sure at some point we're going we're gonna to see more results of Rock Trader. And yeah, thank you. Thanks, Omar.